Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to be looking at 12 different sports phraseovers, which I think are important. Uh, in a future video, we're going to be looking at specifically um, at business phrasal verbs, business idiomatic expressions, business vocabulary. Now, this type of vocabulary is typically used in sports, in sports context, and I'm going to be explaining how it's used in sports context, but it's also used in everyday life, in business, in work. Okay, so let's get into it. The first one is kickoff. So kickoff is what I'm doing right now. It's starting something, it's starting an activity. Kickoff comes from uh, football. In football, in, in American football, um, the way in which you start a game is with a kickoff, right? Uh, even when there's a touchdown, um, the other team needs to kick off the ball or the team that scored the touchdown needs to kick off. So kickoff basically means to start something, to start an activity. For example, we can say we will kick off the meeting at 9 a.m. sharp, right? A question for you is how do you, pre how do you prefer to kick off your workday? So how do you prefer to start to, to kick off your workday, right? Okay, let's go to the second one. The second one is run through. Run through basically means that like in sports, you run through the team because you're trying to score, right? So if you run through something in business language or in professional language, it means that you need to check something, right? For example, I can say, let's run through the presentation one more time before the client arrives, right? So we have a presentation, we prepared it, we have time before we present it to the person or to the client, let's run through it, right? Let's check it. So question for you is what steps do you take to run through a project before presenting it, right? So this is like checking it right before you present it, right? To see if there are any mistakes, any corrections you need to make. Okay, let's go to the third one, kind of interesting, drop the ball. So drop the ball, like if you're, a lot of these have uh, reference or make reference to football. If you, if you play in football, right? Or if you're playing football, you need to grab the ball with your hands, right? So if you drop the ball, you lose the ball, right? You lose the ability to score with the ball, basically. So drop the ball basically means to make a huge mistake, right? So an example, we can't afford to drop the ball on this project. It's too important, right? So, or you could say, I dropped the ball yesterday when I uh, spoke out of turn or when I interrupted or when I said something I wasn't supposed to say right or when I revealed information I wasn't supposed to reveal so a question for you is can you describe a time when you felt you dropped the ball at work and how did you handle this situation right so drop the ball I mean it's a mistake but it's a big mistake it's a big blunder right that people usually do um, okay team up team up is basically self-explanatory it means that you need to uh, basically huddle up with your team right and talk about how to solve the problem how to solve the issue right for example we need to team up with the marketing department to ensure the campaign success right so in this case team up is a is kind of like a collaboration cooperation collaboration with other departments with other sections of, of, of the company for example the sales department and the production department need to team up to figure out this problem, right, for example. Okay, so the question, how do you approach teaming up with colleagues from different departments, right? So let me know in the comments. All right, the fifth one is tackle. So tackle, again, a football reference, is when you're playing and you need to tackle your opponent in order to stop them from scoring, right? So. Uh, tackle is basically how are you going to confront or face the issue, right? And you need to do it in an effective, direct way. So example sentence, we need to tackle these issues head on 
if we want to meet our deadline, right? So we need to get working. We need to figure this out now and do it effectively, right? Question, what methods do you use to tackle challenging tasks at work? So let me know in the comments. All right, number six, pitch in. Pitch in is kind of interesting because it's like in Spanish, uh, cooperar, right? You need to pitch in when, some, when uh, I don't know, the people that you are with are going to buy pizza <clears throat> or when people are buying beer, you need to pitch in, right? Like cooperacha, you need to give money to buy uh, 20 pizzas for the whole team, right? Um, but also it means to basically cooperate in not just the financial or economic sense, but also uh, with work, with responsibility. Like for example, everyone needs to pitch in to get the project completed on time, right? So everybody needs to do their part. Everybody needs to cooperate and participate and be responsible so we can do this as a team, right? Um, so the question, can you share an experience where you had to pitch in to help the team meet a deadline? Let me know. Seven is go for. Go for is very interesting because at first you hear it and you're like, go for, what, what does that mean? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for it, right? Like, hey, uh, you know, like, I like that girl. Are you going to ask her out? I don't know come on man go for it right like just do it kind of like Nike um, but in this case let me give you the example and then I'll explain it we need to go for the more aggressive marketing strategy so go for in this case means that you need to choose that option right like let's say you have different options and you say what do you want a B C or D and you say we need to go for B right I think it's the best option so in this case it's like making the decision or choosing among different options right so the question when you have to make a big decision at work how do you determine whether to go for a bold or a cautious approach right a bold is risky and a cautious approach is like playing it safe right all right number eight throw in the towel so this is like in boxing if you throw in the towel you give up right basically that's that's what it means you you throw in the towel i give up i'm done right example sentence after after months of struggling he finally decided to throw in the towel and look for a new job right so he decided to quit he threw in the towel right and you can throw in the towel with many different types of situations right like if you're doing a project a personal project and you quit you give up you throw in the towel right so question, can you describe a situation where you felt like throwing in the towel and how did you handle it, all right? Number nine, play hardball. Play hardball is an expression or a phrasal verb that you use when you're negotiating. And it's basically like haciendo el difícil, right? Like you're playing hardball, you're, you're being difficult because Maybe it's a strategy or maybe because you really don't want to do uh, or be part of the negotiation. So it's basically being difficult, right? For example, during the negotiations, they decided to play hardball to get the best deal possible, right? So you can play hardball to get a good deal, right, at first. But then if the other person knows you're bluffing, they may call your bluff and say, you know what, I quit or I, don't, I throw in the towel in this negotiation and then you lose the, the negotiation, right? You won't get anything out of it. So the question, how do you approach situations at work where you need to play hardball to achieve your goals, right? Maybe you're negotiating with your boss, a uh, 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 salary raise, and your boss tells you, I'll give you this much, 2%, and you're like, no, 10%. And he's like, 3%, no, 10, right? And you're playing hardball, it's like, you won't give up, you won't throw in the towel, right? Okay, number 10, level the playing field. So level the playing field basically means to make everything equal, impartial for everybody, right? Um, if, if like things are too unfair, right? Like let's say uh, a strong team is, is, is competing against a very weak team, that's not fair, right? You need to level the playing field, you need to make it equal for everybody so everybody has an equal opportunity to win right like in boxing you have the heavyweights 
the lightweights, the, you know, so it depends on weight. So you level the playing field. You're not gonna put a heavy weight versus a lightweight, right? Or a featherweight. Okay, so example sentence, we need to level the playing field by providing the same resources to all departments, right? So maybe the sales department is getting more money from the budget and not the production department, right? So we need to level the playing field so everybody uh, gets the same thing, right? It's kind of like a socialist communistic perspective. So question, what measures can be taken to level the playing field in your workplace? Let me know. Okay, number 11, step up to the plate. Step up to the plate comes from baseball, which is when you bat, there's a base on the ground and you need to walk to it, step up to it so you can uh, have the opportunity to swing your bat and uh, basically uh, fly the ball out of the stadium, right? So it basically means to take initiative, to become like a leader, right? Example sentence, it's time for someone's, it's time for someone, sorry, to step up to the plate and take charge of this project, right? So uh, in our modern time, we could say we need leaders, we need people to step up to the plate, right? In movies and entertainment in politics and a lot of different areas, right? Question, when was a time you had to step up to the plate and lead a project or a task? Let me know. Okay, and the last one, number 12, in the ballpark. In the ballpark is also a baseball reference and it means estimation. It's an estimation more or less, right? It's in the ballpark. For example, your estimate is in the ballpark, but we need to refine the numbers, right? So you say, how much is it gonna cost us to build the stadium? Oh, it's gonna cost us like $2 million. Okay, but that's in the ballpark. We need to get specific numbers, right? So in the ballpark is like an estimation, right? So question for you, how do you ensure your project estimates, how do you ensure your project estimates are in the ballpark, right? How do you do this when you plan or when you budget, right? Okay, and uh, congratulations if you stayed until the end of the video. I have an extra one for those of you that have stuck around in this video. Number 13, blow the whistle. Blow the whistle is probably something that a lot of people would not be proud to do, but sometimes it's the right thing to do. It's the ethical thing to do. Blow the whistle basically means to uh, inform the authorities of any incorrect behavior or uh, wrongdoing in the company or wherever, right? You blow the whistle. You, in, in, in English, there's another term for that, which is rat right or in spanish it's like soplon like you 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 see something bad and then you tell like the police or the authorities right like my boss is stealing money my boss is embezzling right and you blow the whistle right so it's basically telling uh the authorities of something uh unethical in the company or something like that right for example he decided to blow the whistle on the unethical practices he witnessed right and the question for you, what factors would lead you to blow the whistle on wrongdoing at work? A lot of people say, I don't care. I'm not going to get involved in that mess or in trouble, right? Because sometimes it could get you in trouble too with like the people that you're blowing the whistle on, right? They could do harm to you or your family. So it's a, it's a very delicate situation to blow the whistle. But if someone blows a whistle because there have been a lot of whistleblowers especially with like politics and the social media you know there's a ton of them like uh, edward snowden i think and uh the assange guy uh wikileaks all of those people are, are whistleblowers right so if you blow the whistle like a referee right you tell oh i saw something and i'm blowing the whistle right that's a that's a penalty right or that's a foul or whatever Okay, so uh, let me know what you guys thought about these expressions. These are uh, not 12, but 13 if you stayed until the end of the video. So there's that plus one for you. Um, and that's all I got for this one. I'll see you in the next one, all right? So have a good day. Bye.